Oh, hey, how's it going? Hey, it's Buffalo again. Uh, you just caught me on the way down to the pond. I'm just gonna go drown some worms, catch some bass, some bluegill, you know, whatever, do some fishing. That got me thinking about one of the most famous fish stories of all time. Now, I know I'm gonna have to be really careful here to not to hook you with too many fish puns. Boy, if I do, I know I'm gonna catch it. <laughs> Uh, of course, I'm, I'm such a worm, I'd probably just keep sinking them in there over and over and over again until everybody came to tackle me or something. Uh, of course, I'd fly out of there so fast you'd never get caught up with me. <laughs> uh, but unless you, wait, if you had a giant net and uh, everybody was all coming at me from all different angles and I, I wouldn't know what to do and I'd just be crying out for mercy and you'd... Yeah, crying out for mercy. Mercy. <laughs> uh, tonight we're going to continue our discussion on the attributes of God, which we've based out of a book by a guy named A.W. Tozer. Tozer wrote this book and progressed through these issues and these attributes and characteristics of God because he wanted to answer two really important questions. One, who is God? And two, what is God like? Those are important questions because if we don't know what God is like, then we don't know if we are pleasing God in the way that we're living. Now, tonight we're going to be talking about the mercy of God. Another word for mercy is compassion. These two words, mercy and compassion, they basically mean the same thing. And that is, when we have something bad coming to us, a, a punishment for something that you've done wrong, um, and the person that is going to punish you decides not to punish you, that's mercy. Today we're going to look at some classic and famous cases of mercy. And just to start off, I think of the thief who is next to Jesus on the cross, and he says to Jesus, um, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus says, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus had mercy on him, even though there was nothing he could have done to deserve it. He was dying on a cross for the wrong things that he had done. Yet Jesus chose to have mercy on him, even at that late hour. There was a guy um, a number of years ago named Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer was a very famous serial killer because he not only killed people and, and did lots of other horrible things, but he um, then cut up the bodies and actually cannibalized or ate the body parts and was found uh, when, when they caught him to have body parts in his freezer and all kinds of horrible things that he had obviously committed when they when they discovered his house. Jeffrey Dahmer went to prison. Jeffrey Dahmer was sentenced for the murders of 15 people and had hundreds of years in his prison sentence that he would never live out and uh, was eventually then actually beaten to death by one of his fellow inmates. But before he died, he did something interesting he professed faith in Jesus Christ. He trusted in Jesus Christ to save him. Does God's mercy extend to a guy like Jeffrey Dahmer? How about for a city that fits this description? It was the most ferocious of them all. Their very name became a byword for cruelty and atrocity. They skinned their prisoners alive and cut off various body parts to inspire terror in their enemies. There are records of their officials pulling out tongues and displaying mounds of human skulls to bring about stark horror and wealthy tribute from surrounding nations. Nowhere are the pages of history bloodier than in the records of their wars. The nation that they're talking about, the city they're talking about is Nineveh in Assyria. Now Nineveh, as you may know, we find in the Bible in the book of Jonah. Jonah was called to go to the city of Nineveh and to tell them to repent or God was going to destroy them. Well, Jonah goes the other way. If you look in your Bible in Jonah chapter 1, we see Jonah whoosh, go in the other direction. Why does Jonah go the other direction? This is an important question to ask when we're reading through the Bible. We should always ask the question, why? And uh, we, we don't know yet as we're reading through this, but uh, we find out some clues in the next couple of chapters that, that tell us why that is. In chapter 1, Jonah, when he's told by God to go to Nineveh, goes the other direction. 
And in chapter 3, when he God gets his attention, of course, by being uh, thrown into the, the raging sea, which instantly becomes calm, and Jonah is swallowed by a great fish. And uh, after that happens, he goes on his way to the city of Nineveh, where God told him to go in the first place. Jonah goes to the city of Nineveh and doesn't even really give them a chance. He, he gives this quick little eight-word uh, message to them, yet 40 days and Nineveh will be overthrown. He doesn't, in this, at least what we have here, he doesn't tell them there's any hope for them. But what do they do? The king uh, declares that everyone from the greatest to the least should put on sackcloth and fast and refrain, that means refrain from eating any food. As they're doing this, uh, the, the king and, and all the people um, become humble before God and God hears their prayer. And he decides not to destroy them. Now let's pick up in chapter 4. When Jonah finds out that God's not going to destroy those rotten Ninevites like they deserve, look what he says to God. He gets very displeased and he becomes angry and he says, Oh Lord, is this not what I said when I was still at home? This is why I was so quick to flee to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. Okay, so at the beginning, God doesn't tell us in this book why Jonah is running away, but Jonah himself tells us now at this point, he's leaving, he ran away, he didn't want to do what God wanted him to do because he knew that God was merciful. He knew that God was going to help the people out that he didn't want to, to be helped. He wanted them to be burned up and destroyed, he wanted lightning to come flashing down and to, to burn them up and... and because Jonah was not as merciful as God was. And we can understand why. These people were terrible people. They, they are among the worst recorded people in history. But God had enough mercy for them. Okay, let's keep going in chapter 4. God says to Jonah, Jonah, you got any right to be angry? Cricket, cricket. No answer. Jonah doesn't have anything to say because he knows that he doesn't really have a right to be angry. Okay, so Jonah then goes out outside of the city and he finds a place to sit in the shade and uh, wait to see what's going to happen because he still thinks that maybe God is going to destroy Nineveh even though he knows that God has saved Nineveh. So uh, as he's as he's out there, uh, God causes a, a vine to grow up, which uh, makes Jonah happy, and he's feeling pretty good about himself because, after all, all of his needs are taken care of. And uh, a little bit later, God sends a worm to come in and chew the vine so that the vine dies. Well, at this point, Jonah, uh, in what I would call a classic temper tantrum, um, says this, It would be better for me to die than to live because of this plant dying. And God said to Jonah, do you have a right to be angry about the vine? Now Jonah has an answer for God. I do! I am angry enough to die! But the Lord said, and follow along if you have your Bibles open, verses 10 and following, you have been concerned about this vine, though you did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. But Nineveh has more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left and many cattle as well. Should I not be concerned about that great city? In a sense, what God says is this. Jonah, remember the fast that the king put the people on? Listen. 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 And Jonah leans in, and what does he hear? He hears the crying of little babies. He, he hears these, these cattle that are, are lowing because they haven't had any food because the king has declared a fast and says, maybe God will be merciful to us if we show him that we're really sorry. Listen, Jonah, do you hear the babies crying? Hey, Jonah, tell me this. Do you hear the city down there, Jonah? Do you hear the little babies? Do you want me to kill them too, Jonah? When is your justice going to be fulfilled? When is your wrath going to be satisfied, Jonah? When are you going to be happy with the amount of death and destruction that has to be caused in order to fulfill your selfish desires? Do you hear the babies, Jonah? Do you hear the cows? Do you want me to kill them too? 
When's it going to be enough? 